In the last video, we went over Leibniz's version of the chain rule. Now we're going to complete our series on how to compute derivatives by looking at Newton's version of the chain rule and the hybrid version. So the basic question is, if you have a compound function f of g of x, what is the derivative of that with respect to x? And one way you can do that is we can define variables y and z. So we'll let y be g of x, and, z, then, and let z be f of y, and that's f of g of x. And now we've got our three variables, x, y, and z, for applying Leibniz's version. So instead of saying, what is the derivative of f of g of x, we can just say, what is dz dx? And Leibniz told us that dz dx was dz dy dy dx. Well, dy dx is just g prime, and dz dy is just f prime of y. So this gives us f prime of y times g prime of x, not f prime of x, f prime of y. So that's f prime of g of x times g prime of x. And this then is Newton's form of the chain rule. The derivative of f of g of x is f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So let's use it to compute some derivatives. So if we want the derivative of the sine of x squared, well, the inner function is g of x is x squared, because that's what you do first if you're trying to compute x into sine of x squared. You first square it, and then you take the sine. The thing you do first is g, and then you take f of that. So you first square, and then you take the sine. g of x is x squared, g prime of x is 2x f of y is sine of y, f prime of y is cosine of y. So our answer is going to be cosine of y times 2x. Okay. What about the derivative of sine squared of x? Well, sine squared of x is what you get when you first take sine of x and then you square it. So g of x is now sine of x, and then the second step is squaring. The derivative g prime is cosine of x, f prime is 2y, so our answer is 2y times dg dx. So 2 f prime of sine of x times g prime of x. If we want the derivative of e to the 5x, we say, oh, that's g of x is 5x. And then we exponentiate. f of that is e to the y. g prime is 5. f prime of y is e to the y. And we just get e to the 5x times 5, which we usually write as 5e to the 5x. Now, there's also the hybrid form. The hybrid form is the same thing only if we give g of x a name and call it u. So instead of saying f of g of x, we'll say f of u. So the derivative of f of u is f prime of u, that's f prime of g of x, times the derivative of u. And this is good for, for, for extending our table of functions. We know the derivatives of a whole lot of functions, like powers and sines and cosines and exponentials, but now we can say that the derivative of the nth power of anything is n times the n minus first power times the derivative of that anything. The derivative of e to the anything is e to the anything times the derivative of that anything. The derivative of sine of anything is cosine of that anything times the derivative of the anything. The derivative of cosine is negative sine times the derivative of what's inside. When I say what's inside, I mean the thing in parentheses, u. Okay? So, what we can also do is we can use multiple chains that have multiple links. So if we want to find the derivative of something like sine of e to the 5x plus 1 squared, Oh boy, that looks like a mess. But now that we've got our our um, our um, hybrid form, we know that the derivative of the sine of anything is the cosine of that anything times the derivative of that anything. And then we say, oh, let's see, this anything is something messy squared. And what's the derivative of something squared? Well, it's twice that something times the derivative of that something. 
Okay, and how are we going to figure out the derivative of e to the 5x plus 1? Well, derivative of 1 is 0. But how do we take the derivative of e to the 5x? Oh, the derivative of e to the anything is e to that something times the derivative of that something. And what's the derivative of 5x? Oh yeah, that's just 5. So by doing things one step at a time, we can take even a complicated function. Well, you know, what is this function? It says take x, multiply by 5, exponentiate, add 1, square, and take the sign. That's a whole bunch of steps. But by unraveling one step at a time, basically with a hybrid form, we reach our answer. Finally, there's Newton's hammer. I told you, you know, we have, we've figured out the derivative of x to an integer, positive integer power. And then with the quotient rule, we figured out was what is x to the minus an integer power. So x to the minus 3 or x to the 7th. But what about x to a fractional power? Well, we can get that with a chain rule. Because x to the p is x to the p over q to the qth power. So the derivative of x to the p is the derivative of x to the p over q to the qth power. So that means that px to the p minus 1 and now we use our, our, our rule. This is u to the q. The derivative of u to the q is q u to the q minus 1 times the derivative of u. And now we just solve for the derivative of, of, of for this derivative. This derivative must be this divided by this. So it's px to the p minus 1 over qx to the p over q times q minus 1. <sighs> Okay, it's a bit complicated to, to chase down all the factors of x. I'm not going to do the algebra for you, but you see the p over q. p over q times the power of x, and if you count out how many powers of x that is, the number of powers of x winds up being p over q minus 1. So if n is the derivative of x, to, so if n is p over q, the derivative of x to the n is n x to the n minus 1. The power law works for, for fractional powers as well as for integer powers.